Hello, church. Welcome to Numbers chapter 12, 13, and 14. In Numbers chapter 12, you have this wonderful story about Moses, who is the younger brother to Miriam and Aaron. And we know that he's the youngest brother. If you would look in Exodus chapter 2 and Exodus chapter 7 would help us get there. But isn't it interesting how if you put yourself in Miriam or Aaron's shoes, wouldn't it be a bit tough to submit to your younger brother as being chosen by God to be the leader of all these people? And then he goes and marries this Cushite woman yet? Like, seriously, this. And they start to grumble against him. How easy it wouldn't be for us to slip into that same place. The same thing happened to Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. We recognize Joseph was the youngest of his brothers. And, and he had a similar problem. Even Jesus in Mark chapter 3 and Mark chapter 6, something similar happened to him, although he was the oldest. He had other people that looked to him and said, who is Jesus? When he was in his hometown, it was especially hard for people because they looked to him and his family and said, isn't like, aren't those his siblings? And isn't he just the carpenter's son? And they had, a, they had trouble recognizing him. And so we could ask this question, is there someone in my life that I have trouble recognizing because of how normal they seem? Maybe trouble recognizing them as chosen by God or a godly leader, a gifted leader? Or you could even ask this question, Lord, could you show me how I could encourage that person today? And then do it with zeal. Ask the Lord that question in prayer and then do it. Just obey. And then chapter 13, you get into this famous story about these guys, these 12 guys that go to explore Canaan. And what does God say? This is important to understand what God says in verse 2 of chapter 13. He says, send some men to go explore that land, which I am giving to the Israelites. And then they go and explore it. They come back. And of course, 10 of the guys have this bad report. And if you get down to verse 30 and 31, some of the guys, two of the guys, Caleb and Joshua, say, we can do it. And the other 10 say, in verse 31, we can't. And so these guys are not, they've seen this place that they called a cluster because of this massive cluster of grapes they found. They've seen giants over there. And so it's understandable why they would be concerned. But if you understand that God has told them, I am giving you this land, and now they are saying we can't, what they have is not a problem of being pessimistic or even realistic. They have a trusting God problem. And so we could even ask this question, is there something that I am tempted to complain about today? In reality, it reveals that I have a trusting God problem. And so you could even ask the Lord about that. And you could, a beautiful verse that kind of is like the antidote to that is in Psalm 18, verse 29. David said these words, with my God, I can. That's a better response. And so if you have something in your life today where you feel like saying, ah, there's no way I can do this. Instead of saying, I can't, talk to the Lord about it and recognize, well, with my God, I can. <laughs> Church, celebrate that with the Lord. Uh, things will go very much better for you if you do that, and they will for me too. We can learn that from the Bible. Chapter 14. Here you have these people now are given to gossip. They're given to dissension. They're spreading this bad report. And what do you think happens? Uh, the natural, there are consequences. Because God is just, there are consequences. And if you look at verse 18 in chapter 14, it says that the same God who is slow to anger and abounding in love and forgiving sin and forgiving rebellion... That is the same God who does that in the New Testament as the Old. He's also the same God that in the New Testament and Old, he punishes people for their sins. And so this happens exactly in this chapter. And if you look at verse 20 through till about 23 or so, God says, I have forgiven these people, yet these are the consequences that are coming because of their rebellion. And so then you could ask this beautiful question. And if you're not asking this in your own life, you might even consider holding on to this question and being ready to help someone else wrestle through exactly the same question. Father, has there been a time in my life where I have harbored bitterness or anger towards you because my forgiven sin still comes with consequences? 
We need to recognize, church, that God is love, but he is also truth and justice. And then in verse 42, this has actually been a verse that I have found powerful to memorize for my own life. And there's two things that we can quickly glean from this. When these people then went up without the Lord's presence, this verse 42 is a verse that reminds us of what it means, the value of God coming with us. We need to depend on his strength. And so when we pray in the church and we say, let's say on a Sunday morning, we ask God's presence to be with us, we know that he's always omnipresent. But this verse is a good example of what it means when God does not go with you. And so that's what we're praying about when we pray like that in a church on a Sunday morning. And sometimes we also have to recognize that if we think about verse 42, sometimes God says no and is not going to do the thing that we want to do when we do it uh, in our own way. And so in this case, it comes from disobedience. And there's sometimes when it isn't always just from disobedience, but God, the answer is still sometimes no. And so you could ask the Lord this question, Lord, am I doing things out of my own strength or am I relying on yours? And then don't dismiss the need to wait for the Lord's presence to go with you. Things will work out a lot better that way. (laughs) Have a great day with Jesus.